Come over here. Over here. Good boy. You're a good listener. Okay. Thank you. Hey you guys, welcome back to our channel. Today's video is one that we actually have done in the past, but we wanted to kind of just redo it a little bit better so it's easier for you to understand. Before it was kind of just a conversation casually between us outside and I want to make it more of an official guide that you can refer back to when it comes to reverse dieting. So, Cal, why don't you tell them what reverse dieting is? So a lot of people confuse bulking and reverse dieting. Um, I've actually had a lot of clients come to us who thought they were the same thing. They were slowly increasing their calories to gain weight. But the idea is to actually increase your maintenance calories. So slowly increase your calories to the point where you're not gaining or losing weight. You're just accepting those as your new maintenance threshold. It's a much slower process than bulking. And the idea is to slowly implement carbs into a lesser degree fats to get those numbers up to a maintenance threshold. Now this is a very generalized definition of what reverse dieting is because as we know with all things nutrition, everything is really individualized based on each person. So this is good for those of you who have been in a caloric deficit for a long period of time, whether you knew it or not. Um, you know, you, maybe your body is just used to eating those super low calories. This is something that we recommend for someone like you, or you just simply want to increase the amount of food that your body maintains on. So I would say those are the two types of people that reverse dieting would be a good fit for. So although the goal with reverse dieting is to maintain your body weight within a range, some people end up losing weight, some people end up gaining a little bit of weight. It truly comes down to each individual, how long you've been in a deficit, what your diet history looks like, how your body's responding to these increase, increases of calories. So I don't want you to think that, oh, if I'm gonna do this reverse diet, my weight is not going to change because that's not the case for everyone. Probably close to 70% of our clientele actually comes to us at a point where they've been under eating for a significant amount of time. So it might have started off as a deficit for them, but they've been doing it for so long, their body has adjusted and made that their maintenance calories. So their only option at that point is to bring their calories up slowly so they can get back to a point where they can go into a deficit at a healthy caloric intake and see those weight loss results again. So now that you know who should be reverse dieting and if this is for you, you're probably wondering how to go about doing it and how fast you should be implementing these increases. And the truth is there really is no right or wrong answer with this and it does depend on each individual person, which I know is probably really frustrating to hear, but it's the truth and I'm not gonna tell you that you have to do it one way or the other to see results because it really does depend but we can give you kind of a general guideline to start and with that what would you recommend just for the average person listening as far as how much to increase their carbs and their fats start conservative um, anywhere from 10 to 15 grams of carbs per week and then maybe five grams of fat every week or every other week and then if you start responding really well to that, you can go as much as 25 grams of carbs for the next week and 10 grams of fat per week. Okay. So again, if you're responding really well, you can adapt this and be somewhere a little more aggressive or a little less aggressive on that spectrum. It goes back to everyone responds a little bit differently, but those are some pretty good numbers to shoot for. And don't take it so slow that you're barely making any changes to your diet. I've had people come to us who've said they reverse dieted and they've been doing it for like, a year and they've made increases of like five carbs and one fat per week and that's a little bit too slow so you want to be conservative so that your body can adapt but you don't want to go so slow because you're scared to eat more either that's not going to help you get to your goal of increasing your food intake as long as you're not gaining weight significantly each week you're in a good position to continue increasing your numbers so some things that we consider as far as when we make adjustments and how big of an adjustment to make is what your current goals are, what your current body weight is, your activity level, your biofeedback, so things like sleep, stress, soreness, energy levels, hunger levels, all of those play a really big role in your nutrition, which if you're not tracking those things, this is your hint to start tracking those because it's super important. And then obviously your mindset and your mentality. A lot of people who 
start a reverse diet phase are really fearful of eating more carbs in general or just more food in general because they're so used to under eating so we really make sure that your mindset is in a good place each week and if it's something that's where it's adding so much more stress to your life we're going to slow that down a little bit and explain things and let that catch you up and make you kind of look at the bigger picture there's definitely two types of people coming into a reverse diet one group who just cannot wait to get those calories in and they're really excited to increase their calories and the other group is very hesitant very resistant all along the way so we've had both clients obviously we've had several clients who even as they're increasing their calories and they're not gaining weight just mentally they feel like they are and they say you know the scale didn't change pictures look exactly the same but they just feel puffier and it's just they've been so restricted for so long that their mindset doesn't allow them to progress with these things even though they literally are progressing they feel as though they're stuck and they feel as though they're taking steps backwards and it just becomes more of a mental game as opposed to being able to just implement these numbers which is why it always comes back to mindset mentality understanding the bigger picture understanding how to fuel your body properly and making these positive changes physically and mentally all along the way. Some common questions that you guys have asked me on either on Instagram <clears throat> or just in the past, I wrote them down here. Um, number, number one is how is it possible to stay so lean and not gain any body fat or minimal body fat while reverse dieting? So there are a few reasons why this could be happening. One of those reasons is that with the increase of carbs comes an increase in energy and how you feel and how you perform in the gym. So if you're performing better overall in the gym, you have more energy, your training intensity has gone up, you're probably burning more calories than you were when you were just kind of going through the motions and slugging along in the gym. So that's one of the reasons why you might be able to experience some more muscle gain and therefore get leaner. And then to go off of that, you might also increase your NEAT or your non-exercise activity thermogenesis, which is the movement you do outside of the gym. So either you know walking to your car or just moving throughout your house throughout the day. You're gonna have more energy, you're gonna feel better, therefore you're probably going to move more. And the third reason being once you get out of that deficit, there's less stress on your body. So you're feeling better, there's less stress overall, and that could be another reason why that scale decreases. And a lot of people want more reading or research or books or things to refer to as far as reverse dieting goes. But the truth is, this is such a new concept that there really is not that much research out there. And the research that is out there is based on bodybuilding population. So it's not your average person, everyday lifestyle clients that we work with. And if that's you, like you. What we have found through working with many of our clients, hundreds now, and just through ourselves, is that reverse dieting is something that can ultimately be really beneficial to most people. It's not as intense as doing a full-on bulk. Um, it allows you to embrace more food in a better mindset, and overall, you're increasing your food intake, you're feeling better, you're sleeping better, your energy's up in and, in and out of the gym, and it's just overall adding more value to your life so that when you are ready for that next fat loss phase, you're going to have more success, you're gonna start off at a more enjoyable rate of food, and therefore, hopefully, progress a little bit better. And that's something we talk about a lot, is that biofeedback. She keeps mentioning sleep, stress, soreness, energy, levels hunger levels so reverse dieting is a way to impact those things without impacting the scale so setting yourself up to get that biofeedback thriving so you're feeling great and you're not spinning your tires when you go back into a deficit is another way to be proactive during a maintenance phase where you normally would just come up to maintenance and wait to go into a bulk or into a fat loss phase so it's just something where you can be a little more proactive and really take your results to the next level so hopefully you guys enjoyed this video and hopefully it cleared up any questions you had about reverse dieting. If you still have more questions, feel free to comment them below. We will answer them in the comments or you can reach out to us on Instagram and we will see you in the next video.